In this video we want to talk about innovation and specifically about the diffusion of innovation throughout the commercial world and throughout commerce and throughout society. How do innovative ideas spread? And that really is the, the theme of this video. So we'll be looking at some ideas, somewhat theoretical, about uh, innovation and how innovative ideas spread. Uh, the original work was developed by Rogers in 1962 so it's been around for a long time but it's talked about a lot more nowadays because of the greater interest in entrepreneurship and indeed what's happened with the advent of the internet and electronic trading and the new methods of communications within industry and commerce. So we're talking now about uh, ideas which were essentially developed back in the 1960s but have uh, been amplified in terms of importance and content over the last perhaps 10 years. The theory illustrates how new invention gains momentum and diffuses or if you like spreads throughout a specific social system. So we are looking at an idea. The, the idea is in our case commercial. It's a commercial idea. The origins of the idea may be rooted in entrepreneurship or they could be based on some sort of scientific discovery. The point is that the ideas having been developed will be adopted widely if there is uh, commercial mileage, if you like, in the idea. If if it can result in greater efficiencies and hence greater profitability, the chances are the idea will be picked up. So when a new idea, a new way of producing products or uh, new concepts for management or uh, new new discoveries, when these are made available they will be assessed by the business community and if they are deemed to be suitable and advantageous they will be adopted and they will be integrated into the commercial practices of that sector. Diffusion uh, is regarded as a process which illustrates how innovations are communicated through social groups. So diffusions are waves, if you like, of ideas that come from some perhaps epicenter, come from some some source, and they spread throughout the commercial world. Uh, an easy way to understand this is perhaps the importance of Silicon Valley in terms of compute, computing. Uh, a lot of the major companies are based in Silicon Valley in California and they come up with ideas. A lot of the ideas are experimental, they're, they're not fully developed, they're just ideas. But some of the ideas have commercial value, some of the ideas are useful and those will be adopted. When they're adopted, other companies will see their advantages and will try to introduce the same ideas, or if not, very similar ideas, <clears throat> to try to promote their own efficiency. So diffusion is recognizing the advantages of a particular process and using the, that process to develop uh, products and develop ways of working and in this way it spreads right throughout it spreads throughout the world. So <clears throat> with diffusion we're talking about a process which enables ideas to travel. Now the concept of innovation is the introduction of a new idea or if you like the modification of an existing product or service. So an innovation is a new idea, a new, a new concept, a new way of doing something. 
and or it could be as I said an existing process which has been modified but it's a newness and this newness has to be seen to work as we'll see in a in later slides there will be some who will be more cynical and stand back and wait for it to be clear that this is advantageous before they adopt it there will be others who are very keen to be at the forefront and develop the new ideas and get in at the start so people look at innovative ideas differently so an innovation can be anything that's perceived as new and customers are willing to adopt this new innovation so innovation is uh, in a sense it's a very simple concept anything which is new is innovation there are more detailed definitions of innovation but for the moment that's it's a good place to be start with the idea that innovation is something new and some people some customers some companies some will want to be at the, the forefront will want to adopt this and get in right at the start others more cynical more circumspect will stand back and wait to see the benefits before they join in so diffusion is not uniform it doesn't spread evenly throughout the economy or throughout the world uniform uh, sorry innovation starts some parts will develop other parts will stay as they are and eventually they will develop but at the early stages they may be reluctant to join in so diffusion is only possible through innovation individuals must regard the innovation as new and this determines the rate of diffusion so what I mean by that is um, <clears throat> innovation is something new the rate at which it's adopted the diffusion varies and it varies according to the perceptions of the possible users so let's say it's a, a commercial idea which is innovative it's a new way of working it's new a uh, new way of using logistical systems let's say well, some companies will go for it straight away because it's innovative it's new they want to be at the front they want to gain um, competitive advantage as early as possible other companies will worry about its its newness whether it's been tested properly and whether the ideas are robust and uh, what are the risks involved so other companies may stand back so what we have is as I said earlier not a uniform rate of diffusion we have some areas running forward and some areas lagging behind and we'll talk about this in later slides new product development is important for customers as it satisfies a need it's also important for marketers as the new products has the potential to gain profit and com uh, competitive advantage so we like new products as customers we like new products we we don't want to live in a world in which the same products are produced ad nauseum we don't want the same products over and over we want newness we want we are interested in new products we want to see new functionality new designs new ways of using products and we've also got concerns concerns about the uh, the planet the resources we're using so we want to see innovation which is friendly to the planet uh, is efficient in its use of resources and uh, so we're constantly looking for innovation as customers um, some will will say some customers will say they prefer traditional products and they they want to go back to a, a, a previous age and live live a, a simpler life perhaps that's fine but the majority of people it seems to be the case that the majority want innovative products they want newness they want uh, fashionable products well designed efficient and interesting um of course companies want 
to gain a competitive advantage. Companies want to survive. Companies want to make products that meet customers' requirements. So the, co the companies will be interested in innovative ideas and will want to get in early to get competitive advantage. But as I said a few moments ago on, on a previous slide, not all companies will want to do this. Some will worry about the risks and some will worry about uh, the learning curve involved in retooling to make new products and so on. So not all companies will adopt the idea straight away. The rates of diffusion are not uniform as I said earlier. But we have two sides here. We have the customers who are interested, generally speaking, and we have companies who will adopt the product and uh, adopt the idea and innovate and deliver newness to the marketplace. The rate of diffusion uh, of an innovation relies on it relies on the innovation itself. How radical is the innovation? How significant is the innovation? If it's a if it's a, a groundbreaking innovation, something totally new, uh, it may it may take time for customers to accept it. And companies are always running the risk of uh, introducing new products that may be somewhat or seen somewhat as, as too innovative, too avant-garde, too, too new. So therefore the, the customers have to catch up, the customers have to come to terms with this new product and perhaps adopt it. But the rate of adoption may, may be slow because the innovation is too radical. It's, the product has changed too much. So the type of innovation will determine the rate of diffusion, the rate at which it moves throughout the economy, throughout the world. It also depends on the channels of communication. It depends on whether the company can get the message about the innovation to the customers. Um, it depends on whether the customers are interested in the company or interested in its products and will seek out the information. Um, perhaps not all customers have access to high quality broadband connections so can't see the videos related to the product and and so on and so on. So channels of communication. The, the product sometimes needs to be explained to the customer and particularly if it's a, an innovation what are the advantages of the newness of the the product? What's what are the advantages to the customer of this innovation? And the adoption process itself, how how is it managed? In the sense that um, the product is made available, let's say, to local outlets. Let's say it's a physical product made available to local outlets. It's an innovative product, but how is it? Uh, not just communicated, as in, in point B, but how is it uh, marketed to them? How can the customers see the advantages of the products? What, what's the adoption process? How, how will the customers adopt the product? How will they uh, see the product and how will they react to the product? What's the adoption process? How, how will they integrate this product into their into their lives. Now it could be uh, it's a commercial product, it could be a new piece of machinery or a new process, uh, it could be a new service that's been offered and it may not go through local retailers, it may go through uh, directly from the company or it may go through uh, other outlets. The point I'm trying to make here is that the adoption process may not be uniform. Some sectors may go for it quickly, other sectors may be more reticent and stand back. So the whole adoption process may be confused by the, in a sense, the styles of management and the, the personnel that are involved in putting this product out widely in the community. Some companies and some, some managers may be innovative and want to push the product and get involved. Others may be slow to adopt for all sorts of reasons. 
um, they're, they're looking forward to their retirement. So the last thing they want is a new product or a new way of working uh, because why learn new ways? They're going to, going to retire in a couple of years time or perhaps it's the case that management don't want new products because they're afraid of the risk. What if they adopt it and try to use it and it fails? It hasn't been tested. Then it looks bad on them. So the adoption process is complicated. Depends on the social system as well. Some social systems may be very conservative and they don't really want uh, a lot of new gadgets or new ways of living. We see it sometimes even in architecture in cities. Some cities are high-rise and lots of towering skyscrapers with offices all over and very modern transport networks and so on. Other cities are very traditional almost. Uh, if you look at pictures of let's say Rome, a lot of Rome uh, are almost traditional housing. They, they're not high-rise. And if you look at London, it's, it's a very modern city. Look at Tokyo, very modern city. Some cities are very traditional. So rates of uh, adoption of new ideas may be conditional on, on the way that people want to live. The, the lifestyles that suit them, the, the ones that they like, which may be very traditional. So um, the social system will influence rates of diffusion. Let's talk about these again in, in different ways and just move the, the uh, line of thought on slightly. Certain products spread quickly and some take longer to adopt. So, as I said earlier, not all products spread out at the same rate and not all are accepted uniformly. So, diffusion may, may not be, in a sense, concentric circles coming out from the epicenter. It may be that they are diffused rapidly in one country and in other countries people are more reluctant to, to go along with that. So the following elements uh, determine the rate and extent of diffusion of an innovation. The relative advantage. What's the advantage of the innovative product over the previous product? Uh, why should people accept the new product? What is it about this innovative product that, that makes it uh, desirable. So what's its relative advantage? Is it compatible with previous products and existing ways of working and existing ways of living? Or will it make, will it require radical alterations to ways of working, ways of living? Will it, will it have a major impact on people's lives. Perhaps people don't want that. They want to carry on living as they are and they don't want to adjust radically. Perhaps if they do accept the product their lifestyles will change. Uh, many years ago people did not have phones, mobile phones or uh, mobile technology. Uh, now if we walk around the streets many people are making phone calls or checking the internet or looking up information online. But perhaps at the start people were reticent or reluctant to get involved or it was too expensive. Now it's becoming more acceptable. It's, it's more compatible with our lifestyles. Our lifestyle is starting to change around the information age at last. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that there is uh, compatibility issues, compatibility with our lifestyles and with our requirements. There's also complexity. Uh, how complex is the innovation? 
if there's a steep learning curve associated with the innovation, we may not want it. We don't want to learn complicated rules and how our lives changed radically by more requirements. Technology should be simpler to use. It should make our life our lives easier. So the complexity of the innovative product will be an issue in its uh, acceptance. And trialability. Can we can we test it before we we use it? Can we can we work with it before we adopt it? Because that that may get around issues. And can we see the, the thing working? Can we see this innovative product in practice? Can we observe it? Uh, have tests been done on it? Have, have uh, research papers been published on it? Are there reviews available for customers to read about the product? Um, what information is available? Now here we've got um, five points uh, related to the diffusion of information and what partially determines the future and uh, the, the diffusion of, inf of uh, innovation. So let's go over these in a little more detail. Relative advantage for a start. It's the extent to which new innovation is better than the previous models. So looking at what we've got and looking at what's been proposed, why should we change? Why should we change from what we've got to what is being proposed? And this is related to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is simply looking for uh, profit potential. It's, it's looking for um, newness and uh, new ways of developing products, the new ways of working, new ways of selling and so on. So when we do when we look at these entrepreneurial movements we have to say how does it compare to what we had before and if we we judge as customers we judge that there's no big advantage in moving then we'll stay with what we've got in which case the entrepreneur and the entrepreneurial idea this innovative idea will fail and it's for that reason that a lot of new ideas in fact do fail because we don't see the advantage perhaps the advantage is too insignificant it doesn't justify learning about a new product or acquiring a new product or spending cash to to buy the new product because there's no significant advantage so we have to look at the relative relative advantage of a product, if there is one, it will spread. People will want it and it will diffuse. It will move out from, if you like, where it was started into the wider economy and perhaps it will go global. Compatibility. So, as I said earlier, it's the degree to which the product or the proposed product, the innovative product, matches with current values and experiences and needs. Is it compatible with our lifestyles? Is it what we want? Uh, we see all the time proposals for automated houses and uh, driverless cars and so on. Do we want that? Um, do we trust it? Perhaps it's too experimental. Do we want to sit in a car that does not have a driver and will take us home? Uh, maybe we're worried about the technology. There's a bug in the technology, perhaps, and it could lead to an accident. So we have to look at our compatibility, our values, our experiences, our needs. What do we want? What sort of lifestyle do we want? Do we want one which is highly automated and uh, very advanced, or do we want a more traditional lifestyle? The complexity, well, the the degree to which the product can be understood, as I said again earlier. Um, 
we don't want to learn a lot of instructions and a lot of procedures about new products unless we have to. If we can avoid it, we want to keep our lives as simple as possible. And the advantages of a new product have to be compared with the investment we've got to make in terms of learning to use the new product and integrating it into our lives. Trialability. Well, the degree to which a product can be tested by the customer, the trial periods and the samples and so on. Uh, if possible, not all products, uh, innovative products, can be trialled like this. But uh, if they can, it's, it's an idea. It, it overcomes resistance. Or it may help to overcome resistance. In fact, um, of course, the, the samples, if they were given to people to, to try, may confirm that, in fact, they don't want the product. But, alternatively, the samples may uh, show benefits and may get over questions and uh, obstacles that people had in purchasing the product. Observability. Uh, the advantages of an innovative product should be obvious to the customer. And it can be obvious by observation, by looking at the advantages, by looking at the product working, by looking at uh, how the product can be used, by uh, a little imagination as well, to imagine how the product will benefit the the business or the consumer. And it could be done by observation, but it could also be done by word of mouth. People telling each other about the product. And in that way, the idea of the innovation is diffused. Channels of communication. Well, channels of communication is the process of sharing information between individuals and customers. That's all a channel of communication is. It's a way of sharing information between individuals and customers. Mass media is a communications channel which, which helps marketers communicate information about an innovation. Uh, this type of communication is effective in gaining product knowledge. So mass media, television, newspapers, magazines, radio, internet, these, uh, these forms of communication may help marketers communicate information about innovation. Um, there are problems with advertising that sometimes advertising has more of an entertainment value than an informative value. So it depends on the nature of the product. A lot of advertisements, perhaps on television, are related to style and image. They don't actually tell us what's in the product. So if we look at, um, for example, um, an aerosol, to tell us the advantages of the aerosol. But sometimes they don't tell us the price of the aerosol and they don't tell us what chemicals are involved in the aerosol or how the mechanism works. Because that would make a very boring advertisement. So sometimes people have to go to other areas, perhaps go to the internet and try and check what are the, the technical aspects of a product before they make a decision. Interpersonal communication is a method adopted in influencing and changing attitudes about an innovation. Word of mouth uh, is an effective communication uh, method as customers trust their friends and family rather than mass media. So interpersonal communications is important. If if an innovative idea or product comes on the market and someone tries it and has a good experience, they may tell their friends or their family. And in that way, the, the message is diffused. This product is desirable. This product is worth considering. They've had a good experience. So it may travel by word of mouth. The rate of diffusion. Well, time refers to the rate of diffusion. How long does it take for an innovation to be adopted by a social group? 
and an idea may may come into existence a product may an innovative product may come into existence or a particular idea a way of doing things may come into existence it doesn't mean it's going to be adopted immediately some people will adopt it perhaps uh, then there will there will be a, a lag while others talk to them and find out what their experiences are or think about the product or so it will it will travel at different rates depending on the social structure of that society depending on the values of that society if it's a very traditional society a very conservative society the rate of diffusion will be very slow if it's a very innovative society a very modern society the rate of diffusion could be much much greater but the the rates are not uniform they don't it doesn't happen instantaneously it takes time for ideas to spread the rate of diffusion follows a bell-shaped curve which illustrates the time it takes for a customer to adopt an innovation well at least that's what academics think they think it may follow a bell-shaped curve and it seems a reasonable assumption and we'll have a look at that in a second within this bell-shaped uh, curve there are five adopter categories these were identified by Roger uh, the diagram illustrates the rate at which an innovation is adopted by customers and as I said earlier not all customers adopt an innovation at the same time it does have to uh, move throughout the society at different rates the idea will be accepted by some rejected by others later it will be accepted by the ones who previously rejected it and and so on so it will it will move at different rates throughout the society so there are five adopter uh, categories that are identified related to the the bell-shaped uh, curve that we're about to look at so the five categories are innovators, early adopters, uh, early majority, late majority and laggards and roughly speaking people believe that these percentages apply uh, it's not scientific, it's, uh, it's, it's not an immutable law this is just what people believe, a lot of people believe to be roughly speaking the types of um, percentages that constitute the uh, the number under the uh, uh, under the various headings. So, for example, early majority. Well, thirty four percent will adopt in this sort of time scale. So, thirty four percent of the population will adopt in in that sort of time scale. Um, let's let's look at um, let's look at the the various categories in a little bit more detail. We'll start with the innovators. It's said that around two and a half percent of the population will be early uh, will be innovators. I should say um, they're the ones who adopt the um, innovation quickest they're the ones who jump at a new idea and try to work with the new idea, develop the new idea and presumably they're doing it out of a sense of entrepreneurship a lot of them they'll want to gain competitive advantage, they want to be the first ones in they want to get the new idea and work with it to see if there's any commercial mileage in working with it and adopting it and seeing if it can lead to a new business or an expansion of an existing business or greater profitability so these are the innovators the ones who are very keen on new ideas and will consider uh, new ideas as they come out so they're they're the innovators they're keen to try out new innovations and ideas uh, these individuals are referred to as venturesome and risk takers um, very little effort is exerted to appeal to this this category so the the people with the innovative ideas don't have to work hard to get 
the innovators interested. The innovators are risk takers. They like the idea of new ideas. They want to be involved with new ideas. It doesn't mean all the new ideas are going to be successful, but they want to try them out just in case. They want to uh, be involved right at the start. They're innovative people. So the innovator is a key diffusion process. The innovator is connected to the social system which allows the, the flow of ideas. The innovators of course are part of the social system but they are keen to adopt new ideas and they will make every effort to see if there is commercial mileage, if there is potential in the new idea and try to link that to the social system and, and get the ideas adopted. Early adopters, well these are ones which um, look to get in early, as, as the term suggests. They're not as, as keen as the uh, innovators, but they're, they want to get in early and they want to be involved. They, they want to uh, understand the concepts, the innovative concepts, and they want to see if there are ways in which the, the concepts can be applied and if there is um, some sort of commercial advantage out of doing so. They take fewer risks than the innovators but they're still very keen on new ideas. They, they tend to observe the innovators before they decide to adopt an innovation so they're constantly on the on the lookout, watch, watching for what the innovators are doing and seeing what, how they're using the ideas and looking for ways in which they can adopt the, the newness and apply it and get commercial advantage. Early adopters are vital in the communication process as they are integrated into the social system and have a high number of opinion leaders and role models. So they're, they're much more established as a part of the social system. They're, uh, the, early, the, sorry, the innovators are seen as ones who are just keen on technology, keen on new ideas, keen on new ways of working, keen on anything which is innovative. So they're, they're committed in a sense they are we're clear about who they are the early adopters are a little bit more reflective uh, they're more of the mainstream they, they want to look for new ideas but they're a bit more cautious they're watching the innovators to see what's working and what's not working and and eventually they will come to perhaps accept an idea and introduce it and be part of the diffusion process. They may equally of course look at the uh, innovators and look at their experiences and reject the idea. So they're not, there's no early adoption. The early majority, which is a, a much bigger figure, this is uh, the majority of the population. We're dealing with uh, the big majority of the population and of these, 34% will be involved in the innovation process. Um, the early majority are 34% of the population that adopt innovation. So they, they go for innovations, but they, and they go early. They want to be, they're not the first. The innovators are the first and then the early adopters. But we've now got the early majority. The the vast majority of the population, but the ones, it's that section of the vast, major, um, vast majority of the population that adopt the innovative idea. The, this category, they wait and see if the innovation works before they adopt it. Uh, if the diffusion process is longer than innovators, uh, sorry, it is longer than innovators and early adopters. So, as an example, let's say um, a new television technology, perhaps a 4K, 8K or whatever it is, television arrives on the scene. Um, early adopters 
and innovators will go for it quickly they will want to see what they can do with it and if if they can use it perhaps for commercial purposes or what are the advantages of it the early majority they'll wait and see so they won't buy one immediately they'll wait and wait and wait and eventually they want to be early they don't want to be seen as behind the uh, the trends in society they want to lead the trends they want to be seen as uh, interesting people so they will go early and buy the product but they'll have a lot of information upon which to make their decision because a lot will have been said about the product in literature on the internet and in mass media experiences of users will have been written up and they'll be making a much more informed decision uh, generally speaking the above average education age and income and rely mostly on research and information before adopting an innovation uh, their, their, their age and their income suggest that they're, they're young or youngish and uh, they've got high incomes they've got professional jobs they're above average education so they're, they become early uh, users of the product so it's the early majority but again they're not taking a lot of risk they're waiting for the innovators and the early adopters to write up their experiences and information has been diffused from the innovators who got the product first uh, out to the early majority there's also the late majority uh, 34% mass population these are the ones who are late to adopt the innovation they're very more skeptical and they they only adopt an innovation if there is an economic necessity or social pressure they they're, they're reluctant they don't want uh innovation as such they they only do it if, if if there is a clear advantage and if they have to do it but ideally they want to stay as they are and they want they don't want this change but it ha it's happening all around them so they they have to adopt it a lot of people don't like the internet apparently um, but they have to use it they have to use it if, because it's such a pervasive form of information and uh, online selling and news and entertainment and so a lot of people have to have the internet internet and they have to learn about the internet even though ideally they don't want that they will only uh, adopt um, an innovative idea if just about everybody else has got it they're they're very reluctant the late majority are very reluctant in accepting new ideas and finally we've got laggards 16 percent uh, these figures are just very rough but it's what the literature suggests and I don't think they're empirical statements they're not being researched as such but they're they're interesting figures say around 16 percent are laggards this category is the last to adopt an innovation they could be perceived as traditional and prefer customs that are focused on the past these people are looking backwards to the old days the good old days uh, the good old days before we had modern medicine and, and people died in pain those good old days but they're looking backwards and they don't want any part of modern society they don't want any part of the newness that's around them they they have found their answers in old ways and they're happy with that so they they only will adopt a new idea if it's absolutely essential they're the hardest group to persuade to adopt an innovation as they are very suspicious and they do not like change they want to continue as they are so they don't like the idea of change 
The innovation must be a necessity for them to consider its adoption. So they will only look at innovative ideas if it's absolutely imperative, if it's absolutely essential. So these are some of the ideas that we've got about the diffusion of um, ideas and new products and the way in which uh, innovation spreads throughout society. As I said at the, the very start, it's, it's not perfect concentric circles coming out from the centre. Uh, some societies will adopt the product quicker than others. Some will be reluctant to adopt it at all. Um, some societies don't want any part of the the modern way of doing things. Um, so what we have, we're looking at are what determines the rate of diffusion. Um, the channels of communication, the testability and the various factors we talked about earlier in this session. And later on the types of people that we can meet within the society uh, the adapters and all the way down to the laggards, the one we've got on the screen at the moment. So we have different ideas about diffusion of uh, innovation and how acceptable innovation is within the society. And that's all we're going to deal with in this session. So I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.